Welcome, everybody. We are live. Yeah. Move that. Change that. And there it is. Good afternoon. So, Friday is here again, and uh, it's 2 30 in the afternoon. It's very hot here in Texas. Um, I guess my first thought is uh, for all the folks uh, that uh, got impacted by Hurricane Laura, I hope everybody is well. Um, I uh, just wish everybody to, to uh, be safe and, and stuff and wish everybody the best and getting back on their feet if they're displaced or if they got damaged and stuff. So thoughts go to you. So uh, there you go, Hurricane Laura. Um, that's uh, I'd send some good thoughts to those folks. So, Tony, good afternoon. It's always good to have you here. Thank you very much, my friend. And uh, Steve, uh, good to see you here. I um, uh, hope you're feeling well and stuff. And, and never hope everybody's feeling well. Uh, you know, getting stuck at home here in this coronavirus uh, pandemic. And, and, uh, getting a little, uh, little coop crazy. I don't know. What the uh, what the other term is, but uh, we like to check and coop up, you know, sometimes. But uh, it's fun at other times. We spend a lot of time with the wife and stuff. We get to know each other, so it's uh, it's always fun. So um, we've we've been doing a lot of cooking lately, and you know things go wrong. We got uh, we got the ice maker in the fridge doesn't work anymore, so we bought one of those you know, portable ice makers. It's, it's on the countertop, so all's good. We got ice again, so. And things like that happen on, uh, on, uh, every day. So, Glenn, glad you could make it here. Good to see you again. Thank you very much for uh, for joining in. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, two thirty Friday afternoons is the time I come and, and do this live stream every uh, every Friday. Let me see where do I have that? Uh, oh, there we go. All right, I'll find my banners. So, uh, and uh, so I figured Friday was a good time, uh, you know, year, months, years ago, uh, different job, different life in, in Calgary, and it's really where the wife and I met. I uh, worked at a plant that uh, shut down at 2.30 on Friday, so uh, 2.30 Todd uh, was, uh, was my nickname back then, so uh, hopefully reliving that name a little bit, uh, keeping up this 2.30 Friday stuff. Uh, it's fun. We're going to sit here and talk about all things wood turning. Uh, tools and equipment, uh, techniques and processes, wood and material, all kinds of stuff. The last few weeks we've gone through most of the tooling, um, you know, hand tools. We talked about bowl gouges a couple episodes. You know, one was on flute shape and, and geometry. Uh, the other was on sharpening and use. We talked about uh, spindle gouges. Last week we talked about scrapers. Uh, so all those, uh, all those live streams are, are on YouTube and Facebook. Um, you know, go back and, and look at them, if you will. Maybe there's just a wee bit of a nugget of information in there for you. Who knows? Uh, but uh, glad you could, you could join me here today for this one. So I, uh, I have to be honest, I, uh, I don't have a lot prepared today. It's one of those things where I kind of uh, got, um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, busied out through the week and you know, lost a little inspiration. I don't know what it is, if you will, but uh, um, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, sanding and sandpaper. This is a subject that was brought to me by um, one of our, uh, one of the audience here, I guess, if you will, one of our uh, live stream um, participants or whatever, watchers. I don't know what to call you guys, audience. It feels friends, you know, my friends, I guess. That works. Um, Rick Bucker um, put some, uh, some thoughts together on on uh, an email you sent me and, and stuff. So I, uh, I um, wrote those down or copied those emails. Let me just uh, remove this uh, stuff. Uh, stop that. There we go. I'm gonna get back to my notes here. So you know, um, he had lots of good thoughts on sanding. There's a whole heap of stuff to talk about sanding and sandpaper and all that stuff. I'm not going to be able to scratch the surface, pun intended, I guess, uh, this time around, but uh, we'll take a look um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And this may be something that gets talked about um, several times over the next uh, next while. 
Um, James, hey, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Uh, you're getting back to work. I see that in your Instagram post, so that's good news. I'm glad you're, you're, uh, you're getting back at it. And, and uh, you're killing it, my friend. Those things are beautiful, those tool holders. Um, so, yeah, sanding, I, you know, to be honest, I am not the best um, finisher of, of turnings. I, I struggle with it myself. I've tried several different things. Um, I'm to the point where I am mostly uh, like a quick and easy finish, um, either on the lathe or off the lathe. So I guess that's really the only two options there, right? So um, if it's on the lathe, it's typically a wax finish, a wax buildup, uh, that kind of stuff. And if it's off the lathe, it's typically a rattle can of uh, my favorite finish lately, as you guys may have heard me say several times, is a is the Minwax Polycrylic uh, water-based uh, acrylic uh, uh, spray, and uh, it is getting around right here. Yeah, yeah, water-based polycrylic uh, protective finish, so uh, uh, crystal clear finish, ultra fast dry and clear. And I've got a, a satin that, ooh, that a green screen makes that disappear. It's kind of cool. Um, so I use that quite a bit because it's easy, doesn't smell, um, and it actually, if you have a a wood tone color that you want to keep, you know, if you got a nice rich um, or a nice pale uh, maple or ash, this water-based finish doesn't change the color of the wood that much. Uh, a lot of oils and waxes and stuff are going to uh, deepen the, the wood color a tone or two. Um, so that's one reason I kind of like that as well. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, so that's, again, that's what well, you know, I'm kind of diverting off in the finishes, but uh, it's either on the lathe or off the lathe. But to get there, uh, we need to sand, right? So um, that is, uh, is one of the things. So. Uh, what I'm talking about. And I got some talking points here. James, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad as well. So um, let me look at the notes that uh, Rick sent me and uh, and we'll, we'll pick one or two of them and talk a little bit about them. And I'm going to bring up a few things I have. Uh, but I'm really looking for uh, your guys' input, uh, your guys' thoughts, uh, questions. Um, and if you've got topics for future episodes, um, we'll look at that as well. And let me, uh, while I'm thinking about it, um, I'm going to just quickly take a look at the calendar because we got Friday the fourth uh, coming up. Sorry, why is my chain? Eleventh and eighteenth. I think that's the eighteenth. Is probably going to be my so three more before I uh, take a break for a little while. Uh, I might take a, uh, a few weeks off and then restart the screen. So um, the reason I'm stopping the 18th is the week following that is the uh, uh, Winter's Worldwide Online Symposium. And so uh, that Friday is going to be busy out, obviously, with the symposium and stuff. So um, we'll talk about that more at the end. But uh, if you got some topics for, you know, uh, the next couple of weeks or even... Uh, I'll start the series again probably in October, uh, November, go through the Christmas time, and uh, I'll do this again. So uh, drop them in the comments or in an email to me, and uh, I'll add them to the list of, of things I'm doing. Okay, with all that out of the way, thank you very much. Now I need a sip. Uh, wet my whistle. So today... Uh, sandpaper and sanding. So there's a bunch of questions, but let me talk about, let me just uh, mention a couple of them. So uh, questions about s s uh, sanding, such as what grits should I go through for a utility piece versus a decorative piece? So I'll talk about that one a little bit because that's kind of apropos, if you will, uh, because last week I did a PRV on a small wine glass that um, these little guys and so this is a decorative piece it's not really utility uh, although it might look like it's a utility piece um, I don't recommend uh, drinking out of these things because um, uh, number one oops, I got a bunch of cream filler on that so. 
put stuff everywhere from a place of off. Um, this piece being a decorative piece and being dyed and with this cream filler embellishment, uh, this is ash. So for for my purposes, and let me go to overhead camera and turn that off. Just uh, go tight on this a little bit. Yeah. Put this down there so the contrast. So um, you can see that I've got a good separation between the cream filler and the, uh, the, the soft grain or the, the porous grain and the black that's on the, uh, the hard grain. I mean, summer growth, winter growth, I'm not sure. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a, not a botanist. Um, but what, I, what I've found in doing this technique for me is uh, sanding this to at least 600. If I can get 600 grit um, sort of surface on here, uh, when I dye, it still penetrates fine. The, the, uh, I use a uh, um, Transfast, I believe it's a metal acid dye. It's a powdered dye that you mix with water. Uh, you can mix it with alcohol too, I believe. But it, it penetrates fine. Uh, but what the very smooth surface does for me is uh, burnish this hardwood so that the cream filler doesn't penetrate in here quite as much. If you look at an earlier experiment, and it's really kind of bad sanding here, you can see all the sanding rings. So you can see there's not quite a good crisp delineation between um, the hard and the porous wood, so uh, in terms of color. So this means the gold filler filled in um, sanding scratches and stuff in the wood here. So. Uh, this was probably sanded maybe 320, um, probably maybe maybe 400. Uh, and so I found that I, I like this look much better. Where it's got a good, clear delineation between the lines. So for me, uh, for that piece in particular, sanding to a higher grit um, certainly helped. And uh, um, so that's, that's kind of not really answering the full question, but it's giving you an example of the way I sand and finish that particular piece. Um, for, um, if you're doing, in my opinion, if you're doing a utility piece like a bowl for popcorn or salad bowl or whatever, uh, sanding to um, 220 to 400 is more than adequate, um, I, I believe. Uh, the last bit of sanding you want to do is with the grain if you can uh, to make those scratches kind of um, flow better. Um, I don't know that there's any reason to sand any finer than that on the utility piece. It's going to be handled every day, be wiped out every day, and finished with a renewable finish like a, a wallet oil or a food safe oil finish. Um, so that would be my opinion on that one. The, the other end of that is if you have a decorative piece that's going to be finished with a uh, a built-up finish like a uh, poly polyurethane, a spar varnish or something like that. If you're doing a, um, a finish on a bowl that's going to have that sort of high gloss look or a hollow form or something like that, then uh, without any coloring, just natural wood, then I would suggest that you probably only need to sand to 280, somewhere around there. Uh, and we'll talk about numbers of sanding and grits and stuff uh, if I get to it. What I've heard and learned, uh, I haven't done a whole lot of it. So I don't do a lot of um, film finishes that I, I paint on with a brush. Um, but a film finish builds up in those crevices and in, in those sanding scratches, if you will. And, uh, uh, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll fill in those pieces and you sand back that finish and uh, you'll be fine. If anybody disagrees or if they're different, uh, let me know. Um, one thing I do got to do is I got to rewatch Steve Sinner's YouTube on, on finishing. He finishes uh, with spar varnish on the, on the lathe. And uh, I can't remember what he said to sand to. But uh, that's, uh, that's another thing. If you have a decorative piece of bowl, hollow form or something like that, that you're putting a colorant on, uh, then you're finishing their sanding schedule and it might be different. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's uh, 
I don't know if that helps a lot. But those are my thoughts. So what does sanding to um, 400 grit mean? Um, there is, I was actually, where did I get some props here? I was actually collecting a bit of reference material um, when in preparation of this for so uh, in preparation of this uh, a little bit just this afternoon. So I found a couple of books in my uh, in my uh, woodworking uh, books uh, in my I'm sorry my bookcase that uh, that I've used over the years. So uh, this is a little pamphlet that I got out of one of the magazines. But uh, Jeff Jewett, uh, great wood finishes. That's a good book to pick up. Um, I think uh, Jeff had a lot to do with uh, homestead finishes, um, people that make trans fast and trans tint. Uh, but it's a good book on finishing. Uh, it's more geared towards woodworking. Um, that's how I started into this whole gamut woodworking years ago. And so I've read this book, you know, 15, 20 years ago, but I forgot most of it. So uh, another great one is Bob Flexner's uh, Understanding Wood Finishing. So. Lots of great information in both of these about all things finishing and, and that, that kind of stuff. Um, they do talk a little bit about uh, sandpaper, and uh, I think it's in this one. It repairs, yeah. So if we zoom in a little bit. Uh, oh, and by the way, Tony, uh, your uh, your wine glasses it's here it's uh it's uh on on its way to getting finished it's uh taking a week off to uh, do do some stuff so but it will be on its way to you some, uh, sometime shortly so uh, bear with me so let me uh, zoom in on this little table here uh sandpaper so there's two different um standards uh the european which is the FEPA and the CANI standard, which is U.S. Um, most everything that begins with a P is going to be the European standard. So a lot of the European sandpapers were seen in America is European sandpaper. So we get that sandpaper from uh, Steve Bush there at uh, turningwood.com. Uh, most of that is European grade. Um, and uh, I think Klingspor is, is as well. Klingspor is orange because it's a German company. so. I believe they're on the P-scale as well. Um, so up to 220, they're the same. So pretty much the same, anything up to 220. Once you get to, uh, you know, 280 is actually 240. Um, you know, 280 is 360. So 400 on the European scale is only 320 hours scale. So you get to 500, you got to get to, you know, you're at 800 in the European scale. So it's a little confusing, and uh, I wish it was better standardized, but uh, it's not. So, uh, take a look at the. This is a roll of Klingspor sandpaper. See, it's uh, J Flex P150. So, um, so that P in front denotes that it is European uh, make. And, uh, let's see. Here's this. Uh, Multi-roll stuff, you get it uh, Woodcraft or Rockler, I forget exactly where I got this one. And it is 150 aluminum oxide. So it's just 150. So I think this is the uh, North America grade. So that's that's fine, because uh, 150 is going to be the same, but this 400, um, and the J is the, uh, J stands for the cloth backing, uh, J backing cloth is a stiff cloth. I don't know the grades of the cloths yet, but uh, so this 400 is um, is actually supposed to be close to the 800 in the European. So let's see if that's true. I have and. Uh, See if I higher grade. Have you guys experienced any of that kind of um, um, 
you know, problems uh, looking at or feeling sandpaper and seeing that there are differences. So uh, let me know. And uh, also let me know what's your favorite sandpaper. Which one do you like the best? Tony, good. No hurry. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we'll get it to you soon. So for those that don't know Tony, um, every time I do a demo uh, or a personal demo, uh, the piece I turn uh, gets raffled or given away. And, and Tony's getting this wine glass once I finish it. Um, let's see. I don't know about you guys, but uh, my sandal stuff is in a bit of a state of disarray. I'm going to be a little bit better organized with it. I've got, I'm pretty organized for things, um, you know, 80 through 400, but above that, it gets kind of filed into a, uh, a little uh, you know, into that. So, you know, I need to dig through it. So I've got some string sandpaper. That's kind of interesting stuff. I haven't used that very much. Some of these wavy sandpaper bits. Um, stacks of combinations. Oh, got, here we go. Um, I don't know what I got here. I got Abernet. I go on. Oh, I can't see what these are. I think it's 400. These aren't marked very well. So, anyway, well, let's carry on. Let's move on. Let's uh, let's know that we have two different standards, and uh, we just kind of want to be consistent on what we're using. So, um, if you're not a favorite sandpaper, you've got the grits uh, between uh, 80 and and 1,000. Uh, you know, 80, 120, huh, uh, 150, 180 if you need them, um, 220, uh, 240 if you need it, uh, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Um, then uh, stick with the same brand if you can. Uh, that way you're, you're insured to be on the same scale uh, for the most part. So. Cling score, cling score is my favorite. Tony says so. I agree. I'm actually, going to do that. But I do have uh, a very, very strong relationship with this cling spore um, uh, strips of sandpaper. It's by far my favorite. Uh, I've got several rolls of different grits that uh, that I had I've had for years, and uh, I'm still going through it. In fact, my Piston box sanding from the other side of the shop. If I walk away and get it. His wrapped in Plingsbore. I wrapped uh, this side in the uh, the no name woodcraft stuff that I showed a minute ago, and this side in Plingsbore. This stuff doesn't clean clean off very well. Plingsbore is uh, it's got a good coating on it, but. Uh, does not um, get too much of a resin buildup, or doesn't easily get a resin buildup. So that's nice. So we will look at that one a bit more. Uh, this one is good uh, general finishing. And then I found this Y sand, how sand. This is uh, one of the articles out of the Wood Turning Fundamentals in November 2018, Mark Palma. Um, wrote it and he wrote a series of articles on finishing and stuff in that wood turning fundamentals um take a look at that it's a, it's a pretty good article kind of goes through uh, different things i haven't really read through the whole thing didn't have time before this thing but i want to print it out for sure to you um so the wood turning fundamentals are are um, easy uh, or sorry uh, aw publication not cheap but good consistent quality that's true yeah it, it's a premium premium paper, but it, it gives premium results. So, um, but anyway, take a look at this article. 
Uh, the Woodturning Fundamentals is a sort of a free um, gathering of information. I don't know, a little magazine, I guess, that comes out once a quarter or thereabouts um, uh, for its members, uh, for the AW members. So um, there's some good articles in that uh, that part, uh, that series of articles by um, Mark. I met Mark at the uh, symposium last year. Yeah, AW symposium. Nice guy. And uh, a pretty good writer. I like uh, he's uh, written quite a number of things. So, let's see. Um, so, utility versus decorative piece. We kind of went off on a tangent on different um, different kinds of sandpaper. Um, and uh, uh, so, what I would hope people would kind of try and do from the last little bit of discussion was. Pick a sandpaper uh, brand and kind of stick with it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't try other ones, but on a certain project, um, kind of work through your project using that same sandpaper. Um, you, know, you pick up one piece from one brand, another piece from another brand. It might be uh, uh, might give you inconsistent results and, uh, and stuff. So uh, try and stay away from doing that, and uh, you'll, uh, I think you'll have better success. So. Uh, but do try other brands. I think uh, I've tried a lot of different ones. Vince's Wooden Wonders, uh, Wood Turning Wonders. Don't, you know, I'm not, not a fan of that. Wonder Wood stuff is not very good. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the Marca stuff is good. Vince's stuff is good. Uh, there's another sandpaper I'm looking at or I've tried that I really like. So um, I'm going to learn more about that one you know, before I spill the beans. Um, but I may be carrying sandpaper at some time uh, in the future here, so um, we will we'll see. Um, it's one of those things. It's uh, it's a consumable item, which means you, know, you use it and throw it out. You need to get more, so you consume it. So it's one of those things that's uh, kind of good for websites like uh, like mine and other people because they keep coming back for more and more. So um, you know tools. They're consumable, but they take a long time to consume. So, um, so anyway, it's one of the one of the product lines I haven't uh, um, haven't uh, fully uh, caught on with yet. But uh, getting there it takes a lot to kind of figure all that out. So, um, what's next? So, uh, when should I sand by hand versus using an inertia sander or a power sander? So, well, let's uh, so this is an inertia sander. This is a power sander a drill, an angled drill. And uh, of course, by hand, you just, that's what these are. So let's, uh, let's not put that up. Let me put, um, yeah, let, me, let me show you this, this little, little trick that I wanted to show. Um, So I've got on here a spindle adapter. It's, uh, my spindle is one and a quarter by eight. This is a one by eight. All my tool handles are one by eight. So this is a modular tool handle that I sell. It's a four inch bar. What you can do is take a quarter inch adapter on there and your mandrel or your sanding pad. And now your lathe. Is a powered sander. So that's handy as well. Throw on a. Uh, oh, here. I'm choking. Eight grit paper there. We've got a uh, piece of wood. This practice piece of the that works pretty well. So that's a good little sanding attachment. Another little use for that. If actually, if you uh, we're skipping ahead a week, but um, if you take this quarter inch adapter off. Put a 3 8 adapter, you can stick your buffing wheels on here. So it's an interesting little feature of the modular handle that I, I kind of like. 
Uh, but let's um, well, let's stick Tony's. Oops, I'm gonna take that off. I need a little uh, spacer just because the handles the threads aren't as deep as the spindle. So. Okay, so Tony's wine glass is up here. We can take a look at uh, sanding. So I will use an inertia sander. I use 400 grit because I'm up there quite a ways already. The sanding. This is uh, a little thin, so we've got to be a little careful. The, the piece is rotating for coming down here. So if I hold this edge, this should rotate this way. So that's kind of how you want it to work. If you put it flat on there, it's just like sanding my hand. But if you tilt it just so one edge is running, then you can use the inertia of the piece turning to sand the piece. My bearings, I think, need a little, a little lubrication. work pretty well. So inertia sander is basically just a, a sanding uh, pad on a couple of small brass bearings captured in this thing. So and then you can adjust this angle if you want it. So there's several models of this kind of thing on the market which work. Uh, the Drill. I have actually I'll leave that on there because I want to do the inside. So if you look at tailstock camera, we've got to get this sanded in here. The bottom is pretty good. Um, so I'll move this camera ever so slightly. You can see that I've got the bottom right down there fairly well. But up in the walls here, I'm not quite as good. So you can adapt your sanding pads to however you need them. So I've taken, I'm going to say, I'm feeling what I think I want to start with probably 120, maybe 180. I've taken these sanding pads and I've cut them uh, eight times around. Um, Pretty close to the center, probably leave a, a circular mark in the center. I've taken my sanding pad and I've cut it down using a skew. I've mounted this just as I've mounted on. I've mounted this basically on my lathe and used my skew to cut my sanding pad. And so what this does is give me a. Cone shape sanding um, instrument. So, with this power, turn this on. Find a way in there. Not bad. I think what I'll do is I will reverse. Now, since the uh, since the rotation is going that way, when I was coming this way, when I had it this way, I was standing on this surface down here, kind of aiming uh, towards the bottom. Um, I don't know what side that is far side, bottom far side of the uh, of the turning. And that would get me up that way. Since it's going this way, that's going to run into problems, so I think I need to go to this side. Um, it's going to give me problems because this sandpaper is going to catch on that coming down. It's going to catch that sandpaper. We don't want that. So, let's get that in before I had it stuck on and got lost. Hands in the way.
So the other thing we should talk about here is sanding dust extraction. So I don't have my dust collector on. Uh, and I should have because uh, sanding dust is dangerous to inhale. So I do have off screen here my dust hood. I will attempt to get that on. And go. Go. I'm going to get an overhead view of what I'm going to just put on there. So this is a, a hood that slides onto my banjo. This is something I got with my Paramatic years ago. They don't sell them anymore, which I think is it's a great solution. It fits on this post, which is a bracket on my See down there. So that bracket slides on my banjo as this post goes through. And that's this dust hood here. So that does a really good job. I've got my dust collector switch right here. So that's important to have on. One of the other In my slippers, hug my shop in my slippers. Uh, the other thing I got, before I show the other thing, this is another thing that I got from the sanding glove. They're still around, uh, they have some unique sanding solutions. Um, I haven't seen them at the shows uh, lately, so I'm not sure what the state of the company is, but basically, a leather glove. It's got Velcro here, here, and here, and on here, here, and here. And so if I grab, and get uh, 240 paper, and then this is kind of worn out. It sticks to my glove. So I've, I've worn out this Velcro a bit, so that's the important thing. But that allows you to kind of get in there and sand by hand. Um, so I need to got to get another one of these. It's, it's well goes in. More of those. I do like that. I do use it quite a bit. You do have to be careful. You don't want the fingers pop in in the uh, in the way. In the, uh, Here is my latest purchase. One of these guys. So power capped uh, respirator, so face shield respirator thing, powered one. Um, so I have yet to use it. I just got it uh, earlier this week. So that I think is going to help me quite a bit. You know, sand and turn and stuff. Um, so bottom line is whatever you use them, use some dust extraction, uh, use some protection. And above my head here, you can't see it is my overhead air cleaner. So typically I'd have that on and have the dust extractor on. Um, so whatever is escaping the dust collector uh, is getting there. The problem is when it hits my face as it goes up there. So so that's why I got the uh, dust mask on. So yeah, I don't know where we're at now. Let's see. Um, hand. Okay. So we did some power sanding. I showed a little bit of inertia sanding. What I do typically on something like this is when I do a bit of hand sanding, I've got some several pounds of sandpaper here too. So uh, now we've got some foam back stuff. This Sea Soft is, is kind of cool sandpaper. I do like that quite a bit. Uh, that's 80 grit, 150. 
think I've got that up to uh, 220 grit. Uh, but that's kind of cool sounding. I do like that stuff. It performs. And then there's Abernet, uh, which is the uh, mesh type stuff. So here's a piece with 400 and 600. So I will finish sanding the outside here with 240. I would uh, typically use sand is that nice pointy feature so I want to sand up right next to it right at it let me uh, turn this off so it's moving and it's out of focus I want to get right up next to it right there but I don't want to hit that with the sandpaper um, this this peak will never get sanded it's uh it's straight off the tool everything around it will get sanded but not that so so we be careful. Uh, we're careful to kind of get right up into close to it, and around the uh, see the sanding dust coming off. that way, I'll go 400 this way, we're, four, we're going that way, I took the sand on top and things, that drives the, the dust that way, so it naturally goes in, and then I'll take that same grade of sandpaper and sand with the grain, so I'll start doing sanding with the grain pretty much from you know, uh, 120 on up. Once I get to around 400, it's uh, it's really hard to see those sanding scratches. In woodworking, we use a raking light to take a look at what sanding scratches we have left. So, if I can set this up, I'm going to move this second camera here on the tailstock. Look there. I'll use my light here. And we're going to kind of rake across. I know that's hard to see, but it's not really working. And let me try this angle. head off of there. And typically we would rake a light across the, the surface and it would expose any scratches we have. And this is just way too bright for you to kind of see that. I have Let's turn off the studio lights a little bit. To look across this way, kind of into this light, you get to see better. Basically, the scratches will show shadow lines all the way along where they are at. So um, that's one way to view uh, sanding scratches. Is use a light, low rake angle. What is that word, rake? I think we've got negative rake scrapers. Rake is really basically a, a, a term for angle, rake angle. So low rate light on a wood surface will show up scratches. 
And so you'd want to look from the opposite side. And I can see, I don't know if you can see, let me sort of here. So you can see right there, you see that little sanding scratch? Let me start your scratch going right along there. So to pick up those, you have this kind of like, the other way to do that is flood it with mineral spirits uh, or water, and that will show scratches as well. So take a look, take a discerning eye. If you need the, uh, I don't know, well, my lights are up, you can't hardly see me. If you need the, uh, what do you call those things, the, the optical um, viewfinders to see closer, uh, put those on, it will help. So um, that's typically how I sand is uh, uh, one grit, one direction, uh, stop, sand by hand with the grain, next grit, the other direction, stop, sand by hand with the grain, and uh, continue out there. And once I get to around you know, 400, 600, it really is not, it's going to be very difficult to tell. So, still worthwhile looking though. Um, some of these, I've uh, been watching a lot of demonstrations lately as well. Um, so I know some people have as well. And, you know, Cindy Drozd is my friend, and I've watched a lot of her demos. And she, uh, she sands her finial starting at, at the very tip at a thousand grit. And she has a good point. The small details that are out there are just as big as the particles of grit on the sandpaper if she starts with you know, anything less than a thousand. So it's really going to destroy the features. So the smaller the feature, uh, the finer grit of sandpaper you want to start with. Let's talk that way, fold this in half, sand my hand, oh, this is 400, I'm not going to see a whole lot. That's my standing procedure. I'll take this, like I said, up to 600 or 800, both inside and out, down the stem, on this foot surface. And that'll be my prep for this particular project uh, to get it uh, um, I'll put this guy on uh, I want to use um, that one there 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 yeah, let me try that. See if you guys can hear this. Be a good test because I have a. Uh, um, let me put this up while I'm talking about this. I have a uh, PRD on, on Monday night. That's like Monday evening, or sorry, afternoon uh, here. And, uh, don't know that I'll leave it there. But, uh, if I do, I'd like to be able to have a. Uh, yeah. Bear with me if this is uh, blown up the microphone. So let me put uh, let me put myself on full screen here. You can watch me. I'll type this in a little bit. This is a tight fit for me. Okay, there's the button. So that is powered, and uh, give me a thumbs up if you uh, if you can still hear me fine, um, or a yes or something. That would be great. So this will be interesting to find out. It still smells new in here. I think I let it run for a while. Air it out. Um, so yeah, this is a, a great um, sort of safety feature from sanding. Um, I still want to keep the dust collector on, uh, but uh, that way anything getting past the dust collector is not good for me. Living in Texas, you kind of kind of get used to allergies, but uh, uh, James says it says it sounds good. Well, that's good to hear. Um, yeah, works great. Okay, thanks, Steve. Tony, appreciate it. Okay, good. 
good to know. So I wasn't planning on doing that, but thanks for uh, kind of spurring me on there. Excellent. Excellent. You guys are a big help. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. So, yeah, so the, the one question that uh, I answered it uh, should I periodically reverse the direction of the lathe when sanding? I do. Every other grit, I'll reverse. Um, and then, but I also go with the grain, especially on these uh, spindle type projects. So, Yeah, so anyway, the banner, yeah, so Monday, if you, uh, at noon, Central Time, or, uh, or uh, I think it's uh, 6 p.m. Uh, British time, or in the UK. Let's see which one I got. Yeah, there we go. Uh, join me, if you will, uh, turning a little piston box. Many of you have seen that demo, especially uh, locally, because I've demonstrated that a few times. Tony, I think you've seen uh, my previous POD on it. But, uh, uh, for those that are on that haven't seen it, check it out on my website. You can uh, sign up there. And this, the, uh, the AEW has put up this uh, event calendar. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, that shows a lot of the sort of uh, pay-per-view sort of and some free uh, wood turning demos that are happening across the country, across the globe. There's some UK folks on there as well. Um, so go to the AEW website and then click on events and enter that to remote demonstration calendar or something like that. So it's a great resource. Um, so hopefully they keep it up. Uh, we'll see if that, uh, that continues. Um, let's see. So yeah, uh, reverse and sand with the grain, especially in spindle uh, projects like this. Um, sand to whatever your finish requires. If it's uh, my finish that I'm doing, I'm sending to 600 or 800. If you're doing a utility piece, probably 240 is fine. Um, if you're staining or painting a piece, you want it, don't want it that um, any more than 240. Otherwise, your paint doesn't have any tooth to grab onto. Um, so it's something to think about. Yeah, these are general recommendations, not, not hard and fast rules. Um, I tend to break the rules as well, so only because I don't know any better, which is kind of nice. It's liberated, if you will. So uh, let's see. I am going to put up one more banner here. Um, the Returners Worldwide Online Symposium is coming up next month, September 24th to 26th. Um, so if you use the coupon code WTS, Return to Cool Store, at registration, then you get $10 off the registration fee. Plus, you'll get a $10 gift card from Return to Cool Store. So, if you haven't registered and you want to register, uh, do it that way, WTS, coupon code. Uh, once they see that code, um, you'll get a $10 gift card from our store and uh, you can use anytime you need, uh, anytime you want. And we'll be having some uh, some specials on during the show. Uh, I haven't announced those yet, but uh, the name so behind this banner sort of uh, lost my face there for a bit. Um, so yeah, we're going to have uh, some some specials during the show and some of that. So uh, this is actually the weekend of SWAT, and uh, I thought about maybe putting you know special on this weekend, but it really didn't seem um, one thing. I just didn't have time, didn't think about it at the time, and so we thought about it this morning. We said, "Ah, I just hold off." I do have the DMT products on sale. This uh, ends on Sunday or Monday. Uh, Ten percent off all the DMT products again. So. Um, that's been on sales been on for a while. So, uh, but yeah, check out the symposium. Uh, it's the first year this is happening. It's going to be uh, like 20, over 20, 25 demonstrators, 40 different demonstrations over the three days. Plus there's a couple days before that with some networking events and some events. So um, vendor hall uh, will be there, of course. It'll be a virtual vendor hall. Not sure how that works, but we'll all figure it out together. Um, so I uh, hope to see many of you there. So I think uh, that's enough of that. So take a look at that again, if you will, at some point. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do today. I've got, let me check the last comment here. 
And uh, let's see, Steve had a couple of comments. Blow off all the dust from the filters when you're done, keep them lasting longer. Yes, I, I actually got an extra set of filters and stuff. With the kit, so. And Steve said, sorry, we'll not be able to assist you Monday. Yeah, I appreciate that, Steve, anyway. I'm just, uh, you know, hoping you're feeling, feeling uh, all right and better soon. So, yeah. And put that back up. So uh, yeah, so Monday, I think we're you know we don't have a whole lot of people signed up right now. Uh, Shelly's going to do the co-hosting Monday, and uh, we're going to do a practice session hopefully tomorrow, um, and uh, get through it. But for the most part, I can manage a lot of these on my own. But it's always easier with a co-host. So um, a little sawdust in my mouth. Um, so yeah. Appreciate that, Steve, and appreciate your help over the last few months with co-hosting. So it's uh, it's been a big help. And uh, say hi to Anne. Tony, say hi to Nikki. And James, forgive me, I forget your wife's name. Shelly's going to kill me. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's going to do it for me uh, today. We're about 45 minutes, 50 minutes into this thing. So I want to try and keep these under an hour. And... Uh, I, again, apologize, I'm not fully prepared with anything to talk about, but hopefully uh, you learn something and uh, at least the way I do things um, might give you some, some thoughts about uh, what I'm doing wrong or what you're doing wrong or what we're doing right together at all. Uh, but that's what it's all about, a conversation uh, and learn and share um, processes that I've had and work for me. I've still got to settle on my favorite sandpaper, uh, but I like trying them all. So. Anyway, uh, y'all take care. And uh, again, if you're down in the uh, you know, Gulf Coast area, wish you all the best um, with the aftermath of Laura. So uh, until next week, um, take care, be safe, and uh, happy trying. We'll see you next week, 2.30 Todd out. Thanks very much, folks. I'll take care.